here's a segment from a recent Gun Talk radio episode. You can listen to all the Gun Talk radio podcasts however you tune in, or check out guntalk.com for more. You know, the old saying, what's old is new again, and sometimes I feel that way when it comes to what we're choosing for our self-defense guns. For a long time there, it was all semi-autos, and revolvers were totally passe, and almost, not a, not almost, actually literally laughed at when he showed up at the range with them. I'm seeing a change in that. We're talking with Tiger McKee from Shoot Right uh, Firearms Academy. And, and Tiger, I know that, you know, you've been identified as being a 1911 guy forever and ever. We actually did the DVD with you on fighting with the 1911. And yet here I see you tricking out and playing with revolvers. What's going on? Well, like you mentioned, everything goes in circles, right? And revolvers were what I grew up shooting, right? Everybody started with revolvers to begin with. And then uh, the revolvers are what I carried first when I got my permit. Okay. And then I kind of got into the Jeff Cooper thing, studying and training with him. And, you know, it was all about 1911s, which are great pistols for sure. Right. But most of the older guys that I would talk to that have done stuff I'll never do, know more about this than I probably ever will. They were like, I carry a revolver. And you'd ask them why, and they'd give you reasons. But when you're young, sometimes you think you know a lot more than older (laughs) people, right? Yeah. (laughs) Revolvers, yeah, (laughs) right. Um, So, uh, But then as I grew in my understanding of defensive work, and we're talking about self-defense, not law enforcement, not military use. Right. Revolvers are actually like an ideal defensive weapon to use. Why? Well, number one, caliber. So I'm a big fan of 357 Magnum. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look at shots fired to stop a threat, you know, 380, 9mm, 40, 45, it's usually like three or four. Right. If you look at the 357, it's like one to two shots. Still so it's favorite. an incredibly effective round, especially considering the advances that have come along in ammunition design. I mean, now they've got 38s performing like 357s, which is really good. Still favoring that 125 grain load that's been the standard for the 357s forever? I like a lightweight bullet moving as fast as it can. Oh, okay. Because if you look at the formula, right, mass times velocity squared. Right. Which is why the two two three five five six is such a great round. It only weighs 55 grains, you know, or whatever, but it's moving at, let's say, 3,000 feet per second. Right, right. So, so it's, it's that velocity energy squared from part. that velocity squared, yes, sir. Okay, so... What does the average then, person who doesn't know? They're also know, making oh, revolvers, you know, in nine millimeter, that kind of stuff. Well, that's true. Now. That's true. Um, for close quarters fighting, revolvers, you will have less malfunctions than a semi-auto, and we know most defensive stuff is going to likely involve a struggle. If a semi-auto presses against my body, the threat's body, it pushes the slide out of battery. It and won't fire. That's right. A revolver, if necessary, I can jam it against their ribs and feed it to them. So, okay, 357, and I say that knowing only too well that recently I've been carrying a seven shot 686 plus deluxe there you go. three inch barrel. That's been my go to gun for a while. How's yep. that work? Works really good. Um, and then, as you know, I'm kind of building some revolvers now. Uh, yeah. I'm branching out. <laughs> tell, tell me but, about uh, that. What are you, what are you doing with these what are you, chopper revolvers? Right. So the three-inch round butt is like the ideal carry pistol, in my opinion. Okay. You're still getting velocity you need, but it's easy to carry and conceal. But also, especially if you're looking at older pistols, Smith and Wessons, the three-inch round butts are hard to find, and they are incredibly expensive. Yes, that's true. So I thought, well, I'm going to buy a four-inch barrel pistol with a square butt, which are pretty common, and then I'm going to chop it down to three inches and a round butt, and then, of course, do a whole bunch of other stuff with the sights and internals to make what I thought was an ideal carry pistol. Huh. And then again, people started seeing them, 
and listen, I'm trying to spread the gospel on revolvers, right? So I preach every chance I get. Um, they would see what I had done for myself, and they were like, man, I would like for you to do this to my pistol. Okay, here's the funny part of it. I mean, right before we had you on, we had Rob Latham on. Obviously, Rob works for Springfield Armory. He's shot everything everywhere. And we start off, and we're talking about revolvers and how much he loves revolvers. You, and then you go talk to Ken Campbell over at Gunsight, you know, right, the 1911 place, the semi-auto place. Yep. And he's talking about how much he loves revolvers. Just exactly what you're saying. The people who have been shooting a long time, and especially the people who have gone there, done that, been involved in gunfights, it's they may carry a semi-auto, but chances are there also is a revolver with them somewhere. They just uh, understand no the benefits of it. So, so okay, so you're building these things. How does somebody find out about it or maybe even buy one? What's what's the deal? Well, <laughs> we're in the process of rebuilding our website, but like everything else, this virus stuff uh, threw a loop in all the operations, you know. So we're right. running a little bit behind on that. But we are constantly posting stuff on social media. And then, of course, they can go to our website and email me. Okay. Yeah, and shoot right. Uh, the website is shoot right, and it's s h o o t r i t e dot org. Shoot right dot org. So, for the the person who says, "Well, gee, you know, six shots with the three fifty seven, what's the big deal?" And of course, historically, we know how well that cartridge has worked. How do you explain why somebody might want to give up their Wonder Nine and and start carrying a revolver? Well, I don't try to explain it to them. I'm just going to list the benefits. And then ultimately, right, the weapon you choose is up to you. I mean, this stuff is a martial art, just like any other martial art. And so mm -hmm. your weapon might be a little bit different from what I carry. But I do talk about the benefits. And then if somebody says, well, hey, I've never really done any work with one, I'll say, well, let's spend 30 minutes and kind of look at this. The key thing is revolvers are easy to shoot, right, point-and-click kind of thing. But they are the most difficult to manipulate and shoot accurately. So the only person that should carry a revolver is someone who's going to put the time and effort in to train and learn the proper techniques. I'm glad you you said it because I was just about to say you know, the thing about revolvers is they look like they are the simplest thing in the world. They, they're always in Kodak mode, point and shoot, right? Just simple, simple, simple. Until right. you need to reload it, until you need to manipulate it, and then it's like, oh, this there's more involved here, and that kind of leads us all the way back to the training aspect and taking a real revolver class. Like, I can take somebody that's never shot a pistol before, and with mm -hmm. a couple of hours with a semi-auto, I can have them loading, unloading, reloading, and shooting accurately. Okay. That same material with a revolver is going to take about a day with somebody that already knows how to shoot. And then there are people going to say, well, gee, then why should I do that? And I guess the answer is what we always come back to is, it's not right for everybody, and each person's got to figure out what's right for him or for her. But you also have to try it to know if it's right. Uh, there's that. And you know what? And it's not an either-or deal. You may say, sure. well, for this application, I'm going revolver. For this application, I'm going semi-auto. Yep. Revolvers how are about, great backup pistols for how, bad how about, situations. How about concealment revolvers? Are they any harder to conceal? In my opinion, no, um, but again, that depends on body build, right? I mean, I know some guys like that can carry two big, large end frames on each side of their body, and mm -hmm. you would never know it. I'm not going to get away with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you're, you're a skinny little dude. You know, I also, <laughs> it, I remember a very good friend of mine, a lady who was about five feet two, maybe, and she she sometimes carries a full size 45 1911 and knows how to run it. And I said, well, what about when you're like you got to go dress up somewhere and you got to you know, wear a dress? And she says, oh yeah, I just carry a 38 revolver in my bra. I said, okay, I hadn't thought hadn't <laughs> thought of that one, but there you go, you know. <laughs> 
Uh, there, there's always a way, and that's why we have more than one gun for different situations, whether it's different clothing or where we're going or where we're, you know, all of that. And sometimes, honestly, Tiger, it's just kind of how we're feeling that day, isn't it? Well, for sure. Um, what I do, you know, if I'm not teaching, I carry revolvers, but the size may vary, the location may vary. It all depends on what I'm doing that day. All right, uh, spare ammo, uh, speed loaders or speed strips? So this is another reason it's difficult to learn revolver work because there's basically three ways to carry ammo. Uh, what I like is what they call like a two-by-three pouch, right? It holds two mm -hmm. rounds in each little container there on the pouch. Mm -hmm. There are also speed strips, which are really good. And then there are speed loaders. And we're going to completely disregard throwing ammo in your pocket, right, because that gets dirty, it won't yep. feed, all that kind of thing. So you got to figure out, okay, for me, for how I'm going to carry, for how I'm going to manipulate this pistol, here's how and where I'm going to carry ammo. And there again, it goes back to getting with a good a trainer who knows revolver to do that. Well, this is all very cool. I'm excited about what you're doing with uh, building these three-inch. I'm glad that I've... I have arrived at the three-inch uh, level uh, and figured out, okay, that's the sweet spot for me if I'm going to carry a revolver. And a 357 is, makes tons of sense. And trust me, anybody that's old school understands how effective that round is in self-defense. I, I agree with you. I think it beats 940 and 45 hands down. There's no doubt about it. Just keep in mind, the worst thing anybody out there can do is give somebody who's never shot a pistol a lightweight frame 357 and let that be their first shot. It will ruin them for life. Exactly right. Let me uh, give out your website again. It's ShootRight, S-H-O-O-T-R-I-T-E, ShootRight.org, Tiger McKee, super trainer, and uh, now knife builder, gun builder, and doing all sorts of cool stuff. Tiger, thank you so much. Please say hello to Gretchen for us. I'll do it, sir. As always, it's a pleasure to be on your show, and I really appreciate everything you guys are doing for all of us. Yeah, you're one of the good guys. We appreciate what you do out there. We're really committed to it. Thank you so much. All right, 866-TALK-GUNS is going to get you in here. We're going to talk about guns, well, for a long time.